Welcome to our weekly Come Follow Me Book of Mormon historical context. Today we're discussing Alma's 43, Alma 43 through 63, those great chapters. So we finished the book of Alma uh, today. Uh, just some things to help you uh, prepare as you study with your family or, or, or individual this week. Uh, a, a few people that would help you, uh, if you remember some names here, it'll help you along here. So let me add a, uh, a little chart here for you. Uh, it looks a little confusing. Let me walk you through it here. If you'll notice on the top left, we have the chief judges. And remember, Alma was the chief judge. This is Alma the Younger. And he was the first chief, ju chief judge. So I moved him over to the right there where it says uh, religious leader because he was the religious leader the whole time. But after Alma, while he's being the religious leader, if you recall, he needed to spend more time with the church. So he gave up being the chief judge, and Nephiah takes that over. And after Nephiah becomes, uh, Pahoran takes over. And then when we get to the next book, in the book of Helaman, we'll see that Pahoran has died, and we're turning him over to his sons. So let's go back to the religious leaders here for a moment. We know that Alma the Younger is still heavily involved. And his three sons, Helaman, Shiblon, and Corianton, are involved. And you'll see the lines there, how they're moving. I'll talk you through some of those to help you out as you uh, study this week. Lots of military leaders in this week's reading. We have Chief Captain Moroni, Tiancum, Lehi, Antipas, Gid, Tiamner, and so forth. And then we have the great story about the 2,000 striplings there, those great warriors. Just to keep note, we also have Amalekiah, who was a horrible, evil person, and when he gets killed, uh, Amaron takes over, and he gets killed in this reading too. But uh, we have two bad Lamanite kings that we'll address. Also, as you go through here, there are lots of Lamanite cities and Nephite cities. This map may help you. Uh, feel free to pause it. Again, if you want to find this map on your own, the best place to find it is if you go to your Gospel Library app go to the Book of Mormon Seminary Teacher Manual, and it's the last page of that. It's not real clear even when you blow it up, but it's a little better when you have it on your own. So let's take a look at a few things this time. If you'll go to chapter 53, uh, at the very beginning there, they list several cities and what leaders are uh, protecting and defending these cities. And recall, we, we've been at war with the Lamanites for a little while, and the reason we're at war is because apostate Nephites have jumped ship and join the Lamanites, and they're in, in, inciting the Lamanites to want to go to war. Let's go fight these evil Nephites. So that's the reason we're at war here. And it doesn't get any better here, and it happens uh, throughout the rest of this book and uh, the beginning of Helaman as well. So let's go to one part that might be a gospel principle you can choose to study on your own that would be, uh, I think, a really great one. It's in chapter 53. We're talking about all of these great leaders in here. Uh, many of them military, some of them political. Chapter 53, verse 19, though, it's about these 2,000 striplings, these great young warriors here. It, it says in verse 19, at the very end, they would that Helaman should be their leader. This, this might be a, a, a moment to have a, 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 some recollection as who would you choose to be a leader? Maybe a political leader. I mean, if you could choose anybody to be your political leader. How about your religious leader? How about uh, a chief judge or military leader? Who would you be willing to follow into battle? Now, that could be literal, a literal battle, or maybe spiritual battle. Who would you choose to lead you, and who would you be willing to follow? I think you can have a great discussion with children or friends or roommates uh, about this, about, hey, who would we choose to follow and, and why? What characteristics did Helaman have? that made him want to be the choice of these 2,000 young men. Now, if you'll notice here, when we're talking Helaman, we're talking the first Helaman there. That's Alma's son. They choose him to be the leader. He is also the one who's the record keeper and has those plates that his father Alma gave him and so forth. So let's see what happens in some of these stories here. Uh, we always say the 2,000 stripling warriors, but chapter 57, verse 6, tells us that 60 more, whether they age up or they're now ready to join, join the group. So we know that there's actually 2,060 warriors, at least at, at a later point. 
Plus, chapter 57, verse 6 tells us it's not just the 2,000. Sometimes we think, here's the battle, and the 2,000 come in and save the day. But they're constantly trying to recruit and bring people in to re reinforce the military. Chapter 57, verse 6 says there's 6,000 others. So 2,000 plus the 6,000, that's 8,000 more troops that Moroni has at his disposal. And again, we see all of these uh, leaders that are on your screen here. They're all leaders, captains, per se, over these military groups that really will protect and defend uh, the, the Nephites. Also, I don't want you to get too confused. It also calls the 2,000 stripling warriors. They're followers of Helaman now. He's a military leader, but it calls them the sons of Ammon. Remember, Ammon was the missionary who went in. He's one of the sons of Mosiah who went in with Alma the Younger to teach and preach to the Lamanites, and he was basically their missionary. So there's lots of names for the same group of people in this case. Let's go to chapter 54 for a moment. Chapter 50, 54 is uh, political negotiations. We see them today where political leaders make statements, and we're like, what are they saying that for? Well, maybe it's to debate or to argue or to give a position of what they want. Well, we receive in, in the first verse a message from Amaron, the Lamanite king here. He wants to exchange prisoners, which makes Moroni happy because he's like, yeah, we'll do this. And you can read about who what they want to exchange for what. But what it comes down to is uh, Moroni writes a letter in verse 5, and then in verse 16, there's another letter. They're going back and forth here. And what it comes down to is we're not going to exchange prisoners in this case because of what you're doing in here. I, I think in verse 16, it's interesting that Amaron claims in his letter there that the reason they're going to battle is because they have a right to the government. You and I might have a completely different thoughts where we feel that the government belongs to the people. Uh, th that is different in most countries throughout the history of the world. Most rights to the government comes through kings and queens. It's royalty. You're born into it. It's something you inherit. Well, in this case, he feels that we have the right to the government and not you guys. So they might consider the system of judges completely invalid and so forth. Really interesting here. So in chapter 55, we find out there will not be an exchange. That's in the first couple of verses. And again, read those. Have some great, you can identify more doctrines and principles. What message do you feel the Lord wants you to learn from those chapters? Keep reading them. Chapter 56, we understand that those 2,000 striplings have a, a great victory. And let uh, Helaman writes a letter to Moroni explaining that great victory, which makes them all happy. Uh, chapter 57, Amron writes yet another letter saying he will exchange prisoners. Again, Moroni says, no, not in this case. Uh, chapter 58 is another battle. Again, you can read these. There's great chapters. I'm just giving you some, some context in here. Another discussion is what role does a mother have? It doesn't mention a woman by name in any of these chapters. But there are some really key verses to show that it's women. It's the mothers of these soldiers and these leaders who are teaching them. And that's chapter 57, verse 21. That's a great verse. It gets quoted often on Mother's Day, and it should be recognized more often, I think. So you can look at that one and have a great discussion about which women, uh, how has your mother or other women influenced you in your life? That's a good discussion to have. Let's go to uh, chapter, let's go to chapter 59 now, as we see that Moroni is really struggling. He needs more uh, warriors. He's not getting the food supply, the support that he feels he needs to protect the Nephite nation. So he, let's see, we're in chapter 59. So he asked Pahoran, as you can see there, I'm trying to help you keep this organized on this chart, which you can pause and print out or whatever you want to do. Pahoran here has, he's asking Pahoran for help. But Pahoran's the chief judge in the capital city, and he has a problem that there's really a, a revolution, an insurrection going on here. And I, I put the name there in green there for you to read. Um, that guy is a bad guy. He is the leader of this insurrection. These kingmen who want to overthrow the system of judges become king and causes a lot of problems there for you. 
So I put his name up there so you have that. Let's keep going on and seeing what, what else is happening on here. Uh, in chapter 60, uh, 61, we do have the insurrection. Uh, several of them join leagues with the Lamanites. Perhoran needs help. So go to chapter 62. But, uh, Moroni realizes that if the home base isn't safe and running well, there's no point in fighting a battle against your enemies. In other words, Moroni says, I'm not going to go defeat the Lamanites just so this insurrection of kingmen can have a peaceful country. So he's like, you got to clean up house first. I think that's a true principle. No sense protecting uh, the outside world when there's struggles on the inside family. What should we do first? Well, clean the inner vessel, right? That great uh, religious phrase, clean the inside first, clean the house first. Then we can go out and fight the outside world. Because there's no sense protecting the outside from evil if there's evil from within. Uh, again, another discussion you can have as a family. Say, what what do we need to do to fix our family, our inside problems first? And Moroni does. He goes, cleans house. And that's in chapter 62, verse 6, where it names the kingmen leader and the kingmen in those few verses in there. He gets killed just after a few verses, but uh, Moroni cleans house there. I like that. We also notice that in verse 12, in chapter 62, verse 12, Moroni's getting these people like, you're going to join us, or you see that they actually use capital punishment. You'll defend freedom, or we're going to put you uh, away from us. And they do. And but So the troops get uh, reinforced. Uh, Helaman gets some reinforcements. And then let's go to chapter 62, verse 36. Here is a, a, a brave story in here. One of the great Nephite le uh, military leaders is Tiancum. And he notice, he knows that the enemy here uh, is Pahorn and he, or excuse me, Amaron. And he's, he needs to get rid of Amaron, but they're not having success. Uh, so he takes it upon himself to sneak into the Lamanite city and he kills Amaron. Unfortunately, he doesn't escape. He gets killed as well. So we lose a great Nephi leader, but we get rid of the wicked Lamanite king. And that's a great story about what would you be willing to sacrifice uh, for good? Uh, what At what cost would you defend freedom and protect your family? There's some interesting discussions you can have with that. So we're going to go to chapter... I think we'll just go straight to chapter 62 at the end here to see that several people die here. Helaman dies, and in chapter 63, verse 1, Shiblon, his brother, takes the record, the historical record. And when Shiblon dies, the record's going to go to Helaman, who is Helaman's son. So it goes from Helaman to his brother his brother then gives it to his nephew, who is Helaman's son there. So don't get too confusing to where those records are going. We also find out in chapter 63, verse 3, that Captain Moroni, the great military leader himself, dies. And so let's see, uh, Shiblon also dies, which we talked about. And in 63, there's some interesting things that happen in chapter 63. If you will turn to Alma 63, verse 5, it says that it names a man by the name of, 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 of Hagoth. He being an exceedingly curious man, he went forth and built an exceedingly large ship. And he takes off. And where does he go? It says he went westward. Well, who is this Hagoth? Let me just share something really interesting here. Um, Hagoth built large ships and disappeared to the land north. Uh, in 1913... Some people uh, were saying, who was this? And there were some reports and some speculation and so forth. But President Joseph F. Smith told a group of Polynesian saints, this is in Polynesia, Joseph F. Smith said, quote, I would like to say to you, brethren and sisters from New Zealand, you are some of Hagoth's people, and there is no perhaps about it, end quote. Later on, uh, uh, Heber J. Grant, when he was dedicating the Hawaii Temple, he says in the Temple dedica Dedication here, 
Uh, Heavenly Father, we're thankful that thousands and tens of thousands of the descendants of Lehi in this favored land have come to the knowledge of the gospel. Uh, that was in 1920, uh, in the improvement era in 1920. So we have had prophets testify that in Alma 63, this Hagoth, some of his descendants uh, are some of the people who have populated uh, the South Pacific, New Zealand, Hawaii, or whatever, Polynesian islands, uh, and maybe more out there. So that's just a fun little interesting note there. So let's go to uh, chapter 63, verse 10 now. And in here it says that uh, Shiblon gave the record to Helaman, which I explained. You want to make sure you have that just to help keep people straight. And then we're at the end of the record of Alma. So next week we will take a look at uh, Helaman. We begin that na next great book. And remember, Helaman is named after... Helaman. It's the second Helaman in there, not the son of Alma. So we'll see you next week. Have a great week. <laughs>